to visit Baghdad today. Units of the Syrian army continue to defeat the terrorists and in al Qusayr inflicting heavy casualties among them. Said Nasrullah says that Syria is the basic support of resistance and we shall not remain silent while it's subjected to plots by America, Israel and the extremists. Protests continue against the system of Al Khalifa supported by the West in the Gulf in Al Bahrain. And welcome to a news bulletin. I'm Daniel Nizam. Adopted dialogue as a political solution, emphasizing that no one can decide for the Syrian people on their own future. Mr. Mualim added that the international conference, which is to be held in Geneva, constitutes a suitable opportunity for the political solution of the crisis in Syria, pointing out that Iraq cannot be at the side of Syria's enemies. Al Mualim said that the terrorists in Syria are part of the terrorists in Iraq expressing satisfaction with the steps carried out by the Iraqi army in fighting Al-Qaeda. For his part, Iraqi Foreign Minister Zibari asserted that his country has suffered a lot from terrorism and from the attempts to impose foreign wills, but it is the Iraqi people who have fought terrorism. Zibari pointed out that Iraq will be present at the international conference in Geneva. The People's Assembly held its second meeting in the fourth ordinary session and elected the new members of its office according to the bylaws of the Assembly one year after the election of the current members of the office. The Assembly re-elected Muhammad Jihad al-Laham as Speaker after the, he won 196 votes out of 2006. Fahmi Hassan was elected Deputy Speaker after he won 166 votes. The Assembly discussed several draft laws referred to it by the government. <laughs> In commemoration of the 13th anniversary of resistance and liberation, the Secretary General of Hezbollah, Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah, asserted that the states and people of this region are threatened with the extremist radical agenda creeping to it, supported and financed by America. This agenda is what remains of the American plot to destroy this region and impose its hegemony on it in order to suppress the will of its resilient people. In a speech in a central celebration on this occasion in Mashrara in southern Lebanon, he said that Syria was targeted to impose an American political agenda in the region. This is a completely Israeli plot. He asserted that Syria remained the basic support of resistance and that the resistance will not stay still before this conspiracy. Otherwise, the resistance would be stupid. Only the stupid would stay still before death, siege, and creeping conspiracy. Only the wise behaves with full responsibility. Sayyid Nasrullah asserted that Syria's fall into the hands of the Americans, the Israelis, and the extremist American tools in the region would mean the loss of Palestine, resistance, and holy Jerusalem. It would mean that our people would be subjected to a dark and severe period. Serious fall would also mean the siege of the resistance movement, and Israel's entry into Lebanon would impose its conditions in the Lebanese people, thus pushing Lebanon into the Israeli age. President Rafael Correa of Ecuador stressed solidarity with Syria and its people against the war waged on it by world imperialism. As he received office in a celebration attended by the Syrian ambassador in Venezuela, he received President Assad's congratulations on his victory. President Correa asserted that his government would continue its left-wing socialist policy. An information source asserted that the Syrian bloodshed is the responsibility of failing systems and states and that the Saudi Foreign Minister Saud of Faisal is too tiny to speak about Syria and the Syrians. The source added that Saud of Faisal has no right to lecture us about nationalism, Arabism or Islam because he has none of them at all. 
The source said only the Syrians decide their own destiny and system of government. Those who have no color will be judged by history as gambling and plotting agents. The source also said that it was shameful to see the Qatari Hamad dictate on Saudi Arabia its policy and define what it should or should not say. The Speaker of the Iranian Shura Majlis, Ali Larjani, reaffirmed that dialogue remained the best possible way to solve the crisis in Syria. In reply against Turkey's accusations to Iran and Hezbollah concerning their alleged intervention in Syria, Mr. Larjani said such accusations are false and that Turkey's wrong calculations were leading Turkey to be hostile to Syria. He said that after two years of the Syrian crisis, Ankara should bear responsibility and not impose the price of its mistakes on others. A woman was killed when the terrorists fired mortar shells on people's houses in Al Haras, the suburb in the Damascus countryside. An official source said the shells also co caused material damage to the houses nearby. A Syrian Arab army unit killed and wounded several terrorists in Rankous and Daraya in the Damascus countryside. One of the dead terrorists in Rankous was a Taf Hindi, in addition to several other terrorists, including Hussam al Omari. The source added that one of the dead terrorists in Daraya was Abdul Alim, also known as Abu Qasab. Another was Abdullah, also known as Abu Hussam. The source said that the army destroyed dredging equipment and captured large amounts of arms and ammunition. In Aleppo and its countryside, a Syrian Arab army unit restored security and stability in the, in the village of Dahrat Abdrabo in Al Ermon area after destroying the last terrorist hideout there. The army also killed and wounded several terrorists near the central jail in Aleppo and destroyed their hideouts with all their weapons. In the village of El Ziyara, our armed forces killed and wounded several terrorists of the so-called Jabhat al-Nusra. Another army unit destroyed vehicles carrying terrorist arms and ammunition. A number of terrorist vehicles full of weapons were also destroyed in the area of queries killing and wounding the terrorists along the Aleppo-Idlib highway. A Syrian Arab army unit also clashed with terrorist groups in al Haidariya Square in Aleppo and destroyed two of their vehicles. A Syrian Arab army unit stormed a terrorist hideout in Dara, killing and wounding large numbers of them, including non-Syrians. The dead terrorists included Muffa al-Masalmi, Anas al-Mahamid, Isam al-Rifai, Bilal Abu Nabut, and others. The French paper Le Monde quoted two intelligence agencies as saying that more than 200 Frenchmen went to Syria last year to fight with the so-called Victory Front and the armed terrorists. The paper added that nearly 20 French jihadists returned from Syria and the French authorities detained only one of them, claiming that it had neither legal means of monitoring the returning fighters nor information to justify bringing them to account. The paper pointed out that it feared terrorist operations at the hands of these returning jihadists. It wondered about France's worry about such actions while it supported the terrorists and their crimes in Syria. Within the context of the continuing military operation in, in Al Qusayr in the Homs countryside, our armed forces killed and wounded a number of terrorists and destroyed their weapons and equipment. The dead terrorists included the Lebanese Mohammed Youssef Jabour and others. The terrorist hideouts and heavy machine guns were destroyed in the western quarter of Al Qusayr, cutting off their supply lines in the eastern part of the city. Several terrorists were killed and wounded in the village of Al Hawadid while their equipment were also destroyed. Lebanon, five people, including three Syrians, were injured, one of them critically, as two rockets fell this morning. 
One rocket fell on a car showroom near the Church of St. Michael in the southern suburb of Beirut. The other fell on the street of Maroun Misk. Lebanese security forces found the two platforms where the rockets were launched from in the area between Saba and Aitat. Minister of Interior in the caretaker government, Marwan Shabbat, said that launching the rockets is a terrorist act. While Minister of Public Health Ali Hassan Khalil said that the firing of the rockets is aimed at triggering sedition among the Lebanese. In Tripoli, the Lebanese National News Agency said that cautious calm prevailed over the areas where clashes erupted, but sounds of gunfire were heard every now and then. The clashing areas in Jabal Mohsen and Bab Tabani witnessed overnight sporadic gunfire and the fall of some rocket-propelled grenades. The clashes, which broke out about a week ago, left 30 people killed and dozens of others injured. British police arrested three people suspected of being involved in the killing of the British soldier, Lee Rigby, in a street of London last Wednesday, raising to eight the number of those arrested on suspicion of being involved in the killing. The killing of the British soldier, which was described by the British government as a terrorist attack, has triggered angry protests against extremism and aroused worries of a possible angry reaction against some communities in Britain. In Bahrain, protests continued against al-Khalifa regime, which is backed by Western and Gulf countries. Hundreds of Bahrainis who were angered when security forces raided the house of the cleric Ayat Allah, Ayat Ayat Isa Qasim, clashed with police in the neighborhood of Al-Daraz, while thousands of others gathered in the village of Ayat Allah Isa Qasim to participate in a peaceful sit-in against the government and its policies. The forces of Al-Khalifa, supported by the Al Jazeera forces, have cracked down on the huge protests, but the demonstrators continue to organize almost daily protests, demanding the ruling family to call for elections and to establish a constitutional monarchy. That was it for the details for our bulletin today. Thank you for watching us. For more details, you can visit our syriaonline.sy. After the break, it's our economic news with Vani. God bless you. A long live Syria. Lim said that the terrorists in Syria are part of the terrorists in Iraq, expressing satisfaction with the steps carried out by the Iraqi army in fighting al-Qaeda. For his part, Iraqi Foreign Minister Zibari asserted that his country has suffered a lot from terrorism and from the attempts to impose foreign wills, but it is the Iraqi people who have fought terrorism. Zibari pointed out that in the Gulf in al-Bahrain, today. Units of the Syrian army continue to defeat the terrorists and in al Qusayr inflicting heavy casualties among them. Sayyid Nasrullah says that Syria is the basic support of resistance and we shall not remain silent while it's subjected to plots by America, Israel and the extremists. Protests continue against the system of Al Khalifa supported by the Western. Good afternoon, welcome to a news bulletin. I'm Daniel Nizam. Adopted dialogue as a political solution, emphasizing that no one can decide for the Syrian people on their own future. Mr. Mualim added that the international conference, which is to be held in Geneva, constitutes a suitable opportunity for the political solution of the crisis in Syria, pointing out that Iraq cannot be at the side of Syria's enemies. Al-Mualim.